Hey everybody, thanks for watching my uh, my next project. So this is really a scrap wood management project. Um, I'm also trying to reduce the, the overall footprint of the tools that are in my shop, but what I'm really trying to do is get rid of all the scrap wood I've got. So I started with just one single sheet of three quarter inch plywood that I had, and just building a simple box, nothing special. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is use as much scrap wood as I can to uh, uh, concentrate my three biggest tools so my jointer my planer and my table saw so everything i use for mill work i'm trying to get in a centralized location with centralized dust collection that will let me have uh, uh, more area to walk around uh, and uh, just overall just have more space in the shop Now what you see me doing here is uninstalling the uh, the first box that I built to capture the dust uh, under these Delta table saws. If you have one of these, the, the Delta table saw is actually a really good saw. The dust collection is terrible. Uh, this particular box was uh, engineered to, um, uh, to capture as little dust as possible, as you can tell. But this front plate uh, was uh, fit to be around one of my, uh, my dust collector ports. And so I wanted to keep the dust port there without going through and measuring the, that circle and using my rasps to uh, to make it fit properly and all that. So I'm just stealing it and uh, cutting a hole out the front, or this is right in the back, cutting a hole out in the back, and, uh, and that's where I'm gonna put the old plate. And it actually works out perfect, just like that. There's a few things that I'll let him do that are a little questionable for a six-year-old, but I mean, look at this kid. He's, he's clearly a genius. And so uh, teaching him how to use this uh, nail gun is one of those things. What I'm trying to do here is put in some sort of uh, improvement for the dust collection. I don't want the dust collection on the table saw to, I don't want the dust in the table saw just to fall straight down to the bottom. So I'm trying to create a vent, a some slants inside that box underneath the table saw to where as the dust falls, it is collected uh, as best as possible uh, to the uh, to the very bottom. So I'm creating a V. You can see what I'm doing here. Again, this is just scrap wood. I glue it in and uh, put a few nails in, and that seems to hold it pretty good. Tight spot, little person. Uh, he can get in there and get it taken care of. So a great learning lesson for him too. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, can you get up? Can you get up? 
My dad used to say, if it wasn't for people like him, there wouldn't be an OSHA. So I guess I'm following suit with my son with <laughs> the nail gun <laughs> hanging upside down. Uh, I am currently giving this thing the death stare. Uh, I'm studying how I'm going to uh, get these vents together. Uh, again, I'm trying to stick with the scrap wood. I decided I'm going to start taking a few pieces off here. Uh, I put those back on later, but I cut them at a 45 degree slant to help with the dust collection. But uh, I found this uh, quarter inch plow. It's not even quarter inch plow, but it's, it's like whatever smaller than quarter inch, 3 16 inch. Uh, I used it for a drawer bottom on some very, very small drawers, and I just had some scrap of it left over. I had several of these pieces left over, and so I'm cutting them in and uh, putting them in with a 23 gauge nail gun and some glue uh, inside of these baffles, and uh, that's what I'm doing to create it. That's just one of the problems I'm dealing with. It's 22 and a half from this side to this side, so of course I cut my piece 22 and a half. I did not take into account the fact that this removable plate is offset by three quarters of an inch. So now I've got a three quarter of an inch gap that's going to run up both these sides. I ended up fixing that gap by just gluing in some uh, scrap pieces of plywood. I cut them into little triangles so that they, they would fit and I glued them onto the removable door and nailed them in. So that way when the door goes on, that gap is, uh, is is fixed and it ended up working really good. What I'm doing here is uh, installing a miniature door just for me to put my hand in, just to get some debris out, whether it's a, a small piece of wood, uh, just some thin cut off that went between the blade and the blade guard and uh, fell down to the bottom, or if it's something like the table saw uh, nut that uh, holds the blade onto the actual motor. Uh, if I drop something down there, I just wanna have quick access and I don't always wanna remove a door uh, with four screws each and every time. So this is just a, something small I thought of, had a spare hinge. So I just worked this out and, and it works out really good. The paint is some leftover paint from a previous project. Again, this is a scrap wood project. I'm, I'm just trying to get rid of stuff. Old, old wood and old paint from previous projects. I just can't throw anything away. So this was from sort of some old cabinets inside. Uh, not really sure how old it is, but it ends up working out really good. I'm uh, about to put in the drawer here. I didn't show how I built uh, the drawer. I build drawers like a surgeon with a chainsaw. Uh, it, it is crude. Uh, it works, but it's not pretty. And so to spare me the criticism, uh, I just decided to not show how I built the drawers. So one of these days I'll build some pretty drawers, but today is not that day. What I'm doing here is just uh, cutting up some, some more scrap pieces to fill in this gap. Originally, I was gonna put a piece of plywood over it, but I started running low on plywood, so I'm just filling it in with some, uh, some random two by fours and two by sixes, and I think that's a two by eight, and then I'm just gonna paint it over the top. And uh, once this is finished, I'm gonna put the planer on top of it. And I do let out a really manly grunt uh, picking up this 90 pound planer and moving it under my table saw. But uh, it, it, it's, it's super solid, works out great, and uh, I love it.
Uh, to put a face cover over my precision made uh, drawer, uh, I'm using a piece of maple plywood. Uh, here's a, uh, hardly a pro tip, but uh, something I accidentally discovered when uh, getting really expensive plywood. So that is maple three quarter inch plywood, uh, finished, pre-finished. I think it runs about $150 a sheet, or at least it did when I was um, purchasing it. I got it for $15 a sheet because I got it damaged. So if you go to a, a specialty plywood store, not like a Lowe's or Home Depot, but an actual specialty store where cabinet makers get their wood, ask for their damaged products and you can usually get it about 75 to 90 percent off so uh, what i'm doing here is uh, i don't have any uh, edge banding and so i just made my own edge banding with a piece of cut off i just ran it on my table saw took the veneer off glued it on clamped it on the top and then you see me clamp it on the bottom trimmed it off and it's good to go and it's pre-finished it's a it's a much prettier piece than the plywood face that was already there Now wrapping this project up, I want to cover the, the uh, table saw wing where I used to have my uh, router table. Uh, this is a piece of black melamine uh, that I special ordered for the motorcycle table. If you see the motorcycle in the background and you watch the motorcycle table, table build, uh, you'll know that I um, had to special order a piece. So uh, that's what I did. I special ordered a piece and this is just a scrap leftover.